Welcome to 35 Pokes, a format that uses only 35 randomly generated Pokemon each month. In April, I brought some of the weakest Pokemon of that month to tournament matches. Why? Well, first of all, it's fun to build around unorthodox Pokemon, and secondly, they aren't as bad as some people might think. But before we get to that, what was good in the April meta? Let me introduce you to the typical roster. We've got the Spinning Bulky Water Type, the Teleporting Bulky Water Type, and the Wishing Bulky Water Type. Never dies. We've also got Justice, Amy from Sonic, a Route 1 bug, and the Ghost of OU Past. We also have a bunch of weather users who all lose to the aforementioned Pokemon. Except you, you stay. Alright, let's get into the tournament. For round one, I was matched up against the tier founder slash dictator, Friend. And what a better way to lead off my bracket than with the two maligned bug types of the tier, Vespaqueen and Rabska. Rabska doesn't do much in this round, but Vespaqueen immediately proves itself to be useful as the tier's most durable spike setter. The popular setters were Roserade and Golisopod, which lacked the longevity and pivoting that Vespaqueen provides. I quickly took game on with Iron Defense Body Press Cobalion. The team I brought next is the one you're going to see a lot of, a highly defensive team featuring my second unorthodox spike setter, Garbodor. I dropped game 2 to friend after sacrificing Garbodor too early and struggling to make progress. In game 3, we repeated the previous matchup with our tournament hopes on the line. This time I played more patiently, and eventually broke through when I'm able to remove Defunct Rampa. After that, the hazards proved to be too much, and I take home game 3. For round 2, I was matched up against Renellin. For this round, I decided to scout their previous round to see if I prepared for anything in particular. Scouting is useful in these tournament settings because you can punish people for recycling the same teams from round to round. I figured out that they love leading with a spike setting Golisopod, so I countered it by using my own Golisopod with a little bit of speed and taunt. I also brought a Scarf Manetra to use Volt Switch on their ground type lacking team, as well as a Sableye to spin block. The Glycepod counter immediately works, I'm able to start off the game with a big advantage. My Manetra goes down and they bring in Sword Stance to Sidueye, but then I reveal my final trick, Sap Sipper Drampa. I know that the Sidueye only has stab moves, which means it can never hurt Drampa. They eventually break through my Sableye, but by then the damage is done and I'm able to clean up. In game 2, I once again bring my Goberta team. This time I'm able to get a spike in Stealth Rocks, and this allows me to grind down their team with Slowking Psychic Noise, which is great at preventing a Loma Mole from passing wishes to its teammates. And with that, I win round two. Having made my way to the quarterfinals, I was playing a 35 pokes veteran, Chicken Burger. Fucking delicious. I knew this would be a tough set, and I led off with my reliable Garbodor team. They also brought a very slow paced team that's hard to wear down thanks to the double regenerator core and defog Altaria. However, I get an early knockoff against Altaria, which makes its top a lot harder since it's now taking damage from Stealth Rocks. The game trudges on for some time until turn 78 when Garbodor flinches Altaria with Gunk Shot thanks to his ability Stench. 12 turns later, I'm able to deny a wish pass to Altaria with Roar, dropping it below 25% HP and guaranteeing that my hazards will stay up. Later on, I land a Glare on their Cobalion, which secures the game thanks to an uncommon utility move on Garbodor, Haze. Cobalion was their main win con, but now I'm always able to outspeed and Haze away its iron defense boosts. The game grinds out for another 50 turns and I take the win. In Game 2, we both brought much more offensive teams, with me pulling out the Rapska team from Round 1. They managed to set up a Belly Drum Charizard early, but I get out thanks to Screen Slowking and Thunderbolt Drampa. I get my screens back up, and the absolute GOAT comes out, Rapska. The goal of this Rapska is to set up Calm Minds and Iron Defenses behind screens, recover off the damage, and then sweep with Stored Power. You cannot tell me that this isn't saucy. With the screen support, my Rapska 1v1s the Sword Stance to Sidueye, which forces them to trade by using Destiny God Gengar after the Sidueye goes down. Rapska goes down with Gengar, but the damage is too much for Chicken Burger to recover from. Eventually it comes down to a Cobalion 1v1, but I'm able to win since I'm running Max Speed and Taunt. With that, I progress to the semifinals. My opponent in semifinals was Webs or Click X. For this matchup, I cooked up another Rabska team, this time opting for Spike's Roserade, Scarf Manetric, and Spec's Slowking to apply a lot of pressure. Spec's Slowking gets crucial back-to-back -back KOs against Gengar and Manetric, and from there Rabska is unstoppable. They taunt and paralyze Rabska, but it only delays the inevitable. Having gotten too many boosts, Rabska becomes an unkillable god, shrugging off Slowking's flamethrowers with ease. I thankfully avoid getting critted, and Webs or Click X accepts their fate, giving it was perhaps the first ever forfeit incurred by a Rabska. Round 2 is a much slower game, but I got an early kill against their signature Sword Stance Tentacruel with Zipadon. This lets me get up a full layer of Spike with Garbodor, but the double regenerator core proved to be quite durable. 
Eventually, I get in position to spam Roar with Sapat onto rack up the spike's damage, but this takes a surprisingly long time as I roared the Tim's wearing Tinkaton six times in a row, which was so unlikely that spectators began to question the mechanics of Roar. Despite this, I'm eventually able to take down Slowking and Manetric, and they courteously forfeit instead of forestalling the inevitable defeat. Now for the much-awaited finals. Instead of best of three, this was a best of five. My opponent, tourney organizer and dominant force of April, Shifty. While scouting, I noticed a key feature of Shifty's signature fat team, an Altari with no attacking moves. To counter this, I concocted this Gengar set, which traps Altaria while defogs, taunts to prevent roar, and sets up what's nasty plot. I also brought Golduck to provide mid-game pressure since it has a lot of coverage at key defensive Pokemon. In game 1, Golduck does just that, forcing an early kill on Hippo. Eventually, Cobalion forces Golduck out, but I'm able to heal it up and put the pressure on once again, this time taking out Tinkaton. Eventually, Gengar comes in and Altaria falls right into the trap. I promptly forget to talk to the Altaria again and lose my setup, but Golduck has paved the way for Gengar. I get Gengar back in position and clean up game 1. For game 2, I brought a Rapska team, because Rapska is awesome. Game 2 starts out slow, but I eventually Shifty gets a good read and takes out my Alomomola with Choice Band Decidueye. I then end up in a sequence where I use Shadow Ball 11 consecutive times without a single one of Shifty's mons dying, which is truly emblematic of the April meta. Finally, at turn 105, I break through Altaria, and without a Roar user, Rapska is ready to come out. Sableye sets up a Reflect on the way out, and I'll let the rest of the game speak for itself. At this point, we had been playing for an hour, so we took a 10 minute intermission and then went back at it. This team is a modified version of the one I brought to game 1, with Miss Mage is wearing the same set as Gengar. If I could get the same track, I could end the set decisively. But Shifty made adjustments too. As I set up the mean look on Altaria, Shifty reveals Brave Bird, taking my Miss Mages out and my game plan along with it. The game goes on for another 50 turns, but Shifty eventually takes the win with Nasty Plot Gengar. For game 4, I brought the Garbodor team, as it had served me well thus far. I take out Tenekru early on, but Nasty Plot Gengar is able to survive a heavy slam from Cobalion and take it out. Later on, Garbodor gets a surprise KO on Decidueye thanks to some hefty and speed investment. I managed to get a 4-2 lead, but my team has taken too much damage. Without my Cobalion, Swords Dance Low Kick is able to sweep the game, bring the set to a final game 5. For the final game, I was running low on teams, and decided to opt for the Golisopod team I made back in round 2. I wish this is where I could say I brought the ultimate tech and took home the tournament, but life doesn't always work out that way. After a grueling 121 turns, Shifty secures a convincing 6-0 win, and is crowned the champion of the April meta. You may be surprised to hear this, but despite losing a set that took over 2.5 hours, I wasn't upset. Shifty earned the win, fair and square. Over the course of 5 games, we played an exhausting 442 turns, but you know what? It was fun. Somehow for the final of this quirky, niche metagame, there was a hyped up audience cheering us on the entire time. I swept the best player with a fucking Rapska. If that isn't something worth being proud of her, then I don't know what is. You can't always win, but sometimes a losing story is still worth telling. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in May.